to marry on. We ask that all mobile phones be turned off during Mass. We are all searching for happiness. Jesus calls us to work <coughs> with him to build a world of peace and happiness for all. Today we ask for the spirit of discernment to help us to recognize the choices we have to make if we are to be the people of God that he wants us to be. Please stand to welcome Father Kevin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So good morning everyone and welcome to our celebration of this Holy Eucharist. But together with the whole church we come together as a Christian community, and also those who are in the live streaming, we come together to pray to God and also we offer our own personal intentions, our personal needs at this moment. As we come together, we are reminded of our own unworthiness in the presence of God, in our own sinfulness. So we ask God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Together I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really seen and my thoughts and my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And I pray as the Blessed Mary, by the way, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us glorify God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King. God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in the hearts that are just and true, grant that we will be so passioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Those who trust in God enjoy greater blessings than those who trust only in A curse on those who trust in humanity, a blessing on those who trust in the Lord. The Lord says this, a curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like dry scrub 
in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord. With the Lord for his hope, he is like a tree by the waterside that trusts its roots in the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our response is, Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Happy, are they who hope in the Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who ponders by his law day and night. He is like a tree that is planted beside flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Response. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they are like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the ways of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. St. Paul reminds us that the resurrection is our source of hope. If Christ raised from the dead is what has been preached, how can some of you be saying that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has been not been raised, you are still in your sins. And what is more serious, all who have died in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ has been for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ has has in fact been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who had fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel passage is from St. Luke. <coughs> Blessing on those who have to depend on God. Woe to those who rely on worldly things. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward is great in heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your From the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Then fixing his eyes on his disciples, he said, how happy are you who are poor? Yours is the kingdom of God. Happy you are hungry now. You shall be satisfied. Happy you weep now. You shall laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, and denounce your name as criminal on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice when the day comes and dance for joy, for then your reward will be great in heaven. This was the way their ancestors treated the prophets. But alas for you who are rich, you are having your consolation now, 
And alas for you, you have your fill now. You shall go hungry. Alas for you who laugh now. You shall mourn and weep. Alas for you when the word speaks well of you. This was the way their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. When we experience danger or challenges in our life, this is the time we realize what level of trust we have in our God. Last year in a country called Myanmar or Burma, one of the Southeast Asian nations, if we look at the map of Australia, north of us would be Timor-Leste or East Timor, then Indonesia, and then if we go northwest, we have Thailand, and then Burma or Myanmar is the north of Thailand. This country was taken over by a brutal military dictatorship. Pro-democracy protesters gathered peacefully throughout the country, artificially met with violent crackdowns, resulting in the murder and killings of thousands of innocent people, especially the youth. Last March, when citizens were protesting in the city of Michina, in the north of this country, Myanmar, a group of Catholic a group of military police was closing in to shoot the protesters. That is when a Catholic sister, her name is Sister Anne Rosa, stood in front of the soldiers, knelt on the ground, and pleaded with them not to shoot the innocent people. She tried to persuade them. She told them that the protesters were just shouting slogans and not doing any harm. Some of the soldiers also went down on their knees and asked her to get out of their way, but she refused. She told them bluntly, No, if you want to do this, you have come to throw me. The image of a small and powerless nun kneeling down in front of the heavily armed men captured the world's imagination, and it drew attention to the atrocities in the deepening crisis taking in this country. In one of her media interviews, she said that during the chaos, the violence, the imminent danger of her life, she has nothing left but her faith and trust in God. Sister Anne Rosa has a deeper level of trust in God. Certainly, we can say that. If we have this level of trust in God, we can face anything with confidence. We know that God is in charge and He will see us through whatever challenges we are facing. However, if we do not trust in God, everything will seem overwhelming to us. We'll start to panic easily and make rash decisions. We hold on to what little we have and we have rather than be generous with it. It is precisely when we are under stress, under and facing problems, that we realize what level of trust we have in our God. What gives us hope when we look to the future? Is it God in His love for us? Or is it in the balance in our bank book? Is our hope for the years to come based on God's goodness or in the strength of our economy? Does our sense of security come from God? Or as the prophet Jeremiah would put it in today's first reading, is, a, is our trust in human beings or do we trust, do we rely in God? Prophet Jeremiah tells us very clearly, what people whose hope is only in the material things of this world. They are like a barren bush in the desert that stays dry, brown, and dead. They are like it can never grow because it's rooted in the land that is rocky, salty, and empty. 
This is what happened to us when our only hope is in the economy, in the politics, or in the people. We will be let down and be disappointed. Everything will be bitter to us. Nothing will live up to our expectations. We will be always be complaining because nothing is good enough. However, Prophet Jeremiah holds out a promise for those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted beside a river that is constantly irrigated and refreshed. No matter how hot or dry it is, it will always have plenty of nourishment. Even in times of drought, it flowers and bears fruit. Nothing makes us afraid because we have our eyes fixed on God who promises us to provide for us, especially when we really need them. People who trust in God look to the future with hope because all things are possible for our Heavenly Father. The whole world and its future are in the hands of our loving God. People who trust in God are free to be courageous and generous like Sister Anne Rosa. So we could ask, what kind of person do we want to be? Do we want to be fearful, miserable, or despairing? Or do we want to be hopeful, joyful, and generous, even if life is difficult? The secret is simply to look to God in His love for security and hope. He can never let us down. Putting our trust in God is also the key to understanding of the gospel of today. Those who trust in God do not look to wealth or material success for their identity. They can flourish even in poverty because their hope is in God's kingdom. They also do not look to food and drink to comfort them when things are difficult. Instead, they look to God for consolation and so they can be joyful in the midst of suffering. Those who trust in God are not indifferent to the sufferings of others, to the sufferings of our neighbors. They feel sadness at a society that puts the unborn to death, that considers the sick and the elderly as disposable, and that closes its borders to those who are fleeing from corruption and violence. Even as they mourn over a world that has lost its way, they look to God to give them hope and comfort. Finally, people who trust in God do not care what people think of them. They stay true to their beliefs and principles, even in the face of violent persecution. It is just such people whom God will bless. We hope and pray that like Sister Anne Rosa of Myanmar, we have a strong and deeper faith, deeper trust in our God, especially when we face trials and challenges in life. Please rise. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten of man, substantial of God. To him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven and made our own sin. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, the judge. Kingdom of heaven, 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one of this in the midst of sins. In the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for all that we need to become a community that spreads the light of God's love and brings life to our world. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy. May the Holy Spirit support them in their guidance of the people of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who are baptized into God's family. May we appreciate the wonderful treasure we have received with this gift of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for young people, that they may be inspired to build a world that cares, especially for those who are weak and vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they always realize the power of God's presence with them in their times of darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the faithful departed. May they be welcomed into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us also pray for our peaceful sol solutions for the ongoing crisis in Ukraine and Russia. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear for our personal intentions, for our personal needs at this time. In silence, we offer them to God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Loving God, you have created us to cooperate with you in building a world fit for your sons and daughters. Help us to believe that with your help, you can pull down the barriers that divide us and create a community of peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We will now have our first collection. Can I ask the wardens to take us out now? Bless are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual dream. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we pray, may this oblation cleanse and renew us, and it may become for those who do your will the source of eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy 
through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you send us our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, just to break the bands of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy God, God of us. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The Son and the highest. Blessed is you, Christ, the name of the Son. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. This will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the, all the apostles and the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be queer to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ has said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter the Lamb. I am They ate and had their fill, and what they craved the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they prayed.
We will now have our second collection. Could I ask the wardens to take this up now, please? <laughs> Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May I ask those who will be the communion? So I shall come to visit the sick and give communion to them. May the Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. O Lord, having feed upon these heavenly delights, we pray that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the announcements. Please be aware of the COVID alerts and procedures for our parish. Details are in the bulletin. If you are sick, please stay at home. The registration forms for the Sacrament of First Penance are still available from the parish office. Please see the bulletin for full details. Mary's blessings for the month of February will be held on Sunday 20th at 10.30 a.m. Mass. If you would like to participate, please advise our parish office. The Module 2 of the Safeguarding Training will be held on Tuesday, 8 of March at 7 p.m. If you are attending, please leave your details with the parish office. So thank you for the Module 1 last week. We have more than 70 volunteers attending the first module of our Safeguarding Training. And we will have the Finance Council meeting on Thursday, 24th of February at 7.15. Thank you. So for everyone, thank you for coming and celebrating our Mass. And also those who join us in the live streaming, thank you to all of you. And also those who help in our Mass. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.
So have a good Sunday. Thank you.